Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome. We're going to talk about this uh, eclipse on uh, April 8th. And, okay, so first thing I want to do is, is just play a couple real short clips of videos that were taken. Oh, wait. What? How does that happen? If the, but look, the moon is right there in front of the sun. Wait, but the moon is over here. Why is the moon right there if it's supposed to be in front of the sun? Here, I'm using these right here. That's insane. Do you see that? If the moon is right there in front of the sun, then why is it over there? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a good one out. That can't be, or the flat earth, I don't know, or the flat earth is right. Maybe it is flat. Okay, so we've got a, a, a moon on one side of the sky and a sun, the uh, supposed eclipse on the other side. And I think there's a lot of people who have seen the moon in the same sky as the supposed eclipse, which is... Uh, very interesting to say the least. Um, you can just looking at the uh, picture of the supposed eclipse right there. Uh, just ask yourself, does that look like a moon coming and covering the eclipse? Does that look real to you? Okay. And then we've got another um, another little little clip right here, where some other 7, some other interesting. Here in California, and I thought I'd check out my sky guide, and then I noticed that there is a white object next to the moon. Now the moon is supposed to be dark, especially during the solar eclipse. It's considered a new moon, so there's no light on it. So what is this object? next to or behind the moon and it's not a dot so she's got a uh, a sun over here to the left and then the moon right here with something strange covering it. this is the day before april 7th because none of the other planets have dots marking them the planet is the marker so you'll see when i zoom into the moon it's the moon it looks like there's literally an object next to or behind it here see look as i zoom in and out you can see it almost like an eclipse and here's a little blip about the moon and then we'll go back to the zoom ins so here he goes uh, uh, in and out slow motion video so you can kind of see what i'm talking about so does that look real to you guys show this and if so let me know very strange let me know in the comments because i think it's kind of weird i've never seen this all right so we got some very strange behavior going on in the sky. Now let me pull up uh, pull up a, a couple images, and I'll make a couple quick quick points. Um, first of all, um, about about this eclipse, I said, first of all, trust your gut. Did it look real to you, or or like some uh, David Blaine uh, magic, or does it remind you of? Uh, Elon Musk's roadster supposedly traveling through uh, through space. You know, to me, it kind of looked like a piece of uh, dark cardboard, circular cardboard covering the uh, uh, a flashlight. That's what it kind of looks like to me. Uh, I can. So. The other thing. I was looking to see what the Bible has to say about eclipse, eclipses. And I noticed that that there really aren't any Bible verses supporting eclipses per se. Um, the Bible verses that I found all said that the sun was darkened, but it doesn't mention anything about uh, a moon blocking the sunlight. And, and the eclipse... Um, the sun 
technically was not darkened. The sun was uh, brighter than most people had ever seen it up in the sky. Um, very, very bright. And supposedly you know, the, something covered a, some uh, most of the sunlight. Uh, something covered most of the sunlight. Um, but um, that's really not what the Bible says. I mean, I know everyone thinks that that, that uh, the Bible says that there are eclipses because it says the sun uh, was darkened. Um, but the sun, technically the sun is bright, bright, and is not darkened. If God was going to darken the sun, we would probably see a sun and you just watch the sun go dark. And there would be no rim around something that looked like it was stuck right in front of the sun. So to me, the Bible doesn't say we have eclipses. or The, the Bible doesn't talk about eclipses. You know, here's some of the scriptures, the most popular scriptures that, that I saw. Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and heavenly bodies will be shaken. Now, I, I didn't see that happening here. I saw a very, very bright sunlight uh, going on with something uh, pushed in front of the sunlight to block the rays, some of the sun rays. But I didn't see the sun being darkened. And then Joel 2.10, before, before then, the earth shakes, the heavens tremble, the sun and moon are darkened. And the stars no longer shine. Again, I didn't see the sun. I don't see the sun being darkened. If I want to see the sun darkened, I want to see a bright sun and then that, and the sun just go dark. I don't want to see something stuck in front of it to do that. That's not what the Bible says. Matthew 12, they, they, all these scriptures say the same thing. 12, 34, Matthew 13, 24, uh, Acts 2, uh, 20, 2, 20. And Revelation 6, 12, they all say the, the, the sun was dark. Here's one. Revelation 6, 12 says the sun turned black. I don't see a sun turning black. I, you know, uh, the sun will be turned to darkness. And the, So anyway, that's my interpretation. I, I don't see that. You, you can uh, judge that for yourself. Uh, in the book of Enoch, uh, Enoch 1 that goes into tremendous detail about the sun and moon behavior. And it does not talk about eclip eclipses or the moon. The, the path of the moon does not, does not cross in front of the path of the sun. It just doesn't. Um, so um, I don't see anything in there in Enoch that would support a port, uh, support a, a moon blocking sunlight. So, Here's the other thing. Um, I, I have some articles right here that that were put out in uh, April of uh, 2024. And clearly, um, these guys here, it says Proba 3 is meant to be launched September 2024. And its purpose is to create man-made eclipses. So here they're telling us in, in these articles that they are creating Man-made eclipses. They're telling us that. Here's another article. Art artificial eclipses, same, same basic article uh, on demand. ES ESA's Proba 3 breakthrough. Um, artificial eclipses. Here's another article. Newsweek. April 7th, 2024, solar eclipses to be made on demand by new spacecraft. So here they're telling us again, they're, they're, they're creating solar eclipses, man-made solar eclipses. And then here's another article, April 1st, 2024, artificial sun sets record for time at 100 million degrees. So now they're, they're telling us that they're creating artificial suns. And then, then an article in June 20th, this is back in 2022, the Space Bubble Shield, uh, this is World Economic Forum is on their site. The Space Bubble, bubble Shield uh, could, in, uh, could counter the effects of climate change by reflecting the sun rays. So we have all these articles 
about how they want to block the sun. And we know they're talking about global warming all the time. So they're always talking about blocking the sun, blocking sun rays, man-made eclipses, simulated sun. So, so we know they're trying to do it, and they say that they actually have the capability to make and create eclipses and, and uh, create simulated sun. Now, I also found a, a, um, a patent back in uh, 1966 of, um, nah, not this one, right here. I'm going to pull that up so I can show it to you. Here it is. It's a PDF. And that would be, uh, I'll give you the patent, United States Post Office patent number 3239. 660. You can Google it. March 8th, 1966, United States Patent Office by NASA. And NASA tells us back in 1966, this was a patent that they were using to create um, this uh, sun simulator system for use with an outer space environmental test chamber. So this invention is in a, a novel illumination system, sun simulator system, so that the simulator may be used to simulate not only sunlight, but also earth light and moonlight. And they're using multiple um, arrays of, uh, of lights um, to create this. Uh, Con, uh, confined path toward multifaceted reflector um, sun, sun simulator for eliminating the interior of an outer space test chamber. Um, uh, it's a disc-like uh, disc array of parabolic reflectors for directing light from lamps toward a single upwardly concave parabolic reflector a large power outputs required as in the present sun simulator. So, um, so check that out. Um, it clearly shows that back in 1966, they were putting together uh, the ability to create simulated suns and moons. And um, so, to me, it's obvious that, and that was back in '66. It's been so long that that the techno that we have the technology today to uh, to to uh, create these uh, simulated suns and and moons and and um, so you know I think we have the technology to do it. I'm convinced we have the technology to do it. Um, we have the evidence that, that they've been working on it since 1966, and we have the recent articles where they, they claim they're creating simulated suns and, and, and man-made eclipses. So we have that. Then we have this particular eclipse, supposed eclipse, looked didn't look natural, didn't look organic, didn't look like something God would do. To me, um, they were spraying chemicals all day long, very thick chemical spray all around the world. Everyone reported that could barely see um, through the sky to even see see uh, what's going on behind all the thick chemical spray. Why would they do that? Would God, if he was creating an eclipse like he described in the Bible, would would he uh, have all the need chemical spray to be able to uh darken the sun. Um, so why were they doing that? The, the same day they, uh, they started up CERN and, uh, and, um, you know, why would they start up CERN on that, that, uh, same day? NASA fired three rockets that same day with uh, all, all three rockets had occult deity names. OK, um, you have to wear special glasses to see it. Do you think if God creates 
out of the Bible, like he says, a darkened sun and a darkened moon. You think you'll need special glasses to be able to see it? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Um, you know, also with the eclipse that that they that we witnessed on April 8th was a very bright sun, brighter than we've ever seen, with some something covering the sun, you could see a dark circle covering the sun that you could see with special glasses. We couldn't see it approach or we couldn't see it leave, but we we just saw it look like a, a flashlight with a circular piece of piece of black cardboard that he just kind of pushed over it. But if that was true, if that if uh that's what r- really happened, the um the sun, if it was blocked by the moon, if that was a moon, that bright sunlight was not darkened. It was still radiating very bright sunlight. That bright sunlight would have illuminated the sky. It would not have darkened the sky. If you put a moon in front of the sun, bright sun shining, that sun would still, that light would still wrap around that that dark moon object that they had and it, the sky would have been illuminated behind the moon we would not have had a dark sky by by having that dark so-called moon object there the sky would be illuminated still you know that moon supposedly that didn't cover the sun all the way around all the different sides of the sun it just covered the little facing side and the sun light you could see a rim of light around the supposed moon. So that's that that sky would have been illuminated. It wouldn't have been dark. And the sunlight, the properties of light are such that it wraps around objects. That's if that was the, a dark moon there, the, the sun would have illuminated around the moon and actually would have it wouldn't have been dark, dark black or on on the side facing us. It would have been illuminated. It would the, the sunlight would have wrapped around it and illuminated. So, so that scenario doesn't even ring true to me. What we saw, what we saw, it, the properties of light wouldn't be like that. So that didn't make sense. It didn't look right. Um, another thing, uh, moon moon travels east to west. And a lot of people reported that, that that supposed moon came from the north, came down from the north, not not on the path that the path that the moon would have taken. So that didn't make sense. So um, a lot of people saw with their own eyes another moon on the a moon on the other side of the sky from the eclipse. So that's a red flag right there. Um, again, they, 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 they do have the technology for the, uh, to create the simulate sun and moon in space, uh, CERN, HARP, uh, Project Bluebeam, all kinds of technology that we don't know about. And, you know, they have the intent, they made it clear to us they have the intent uh, to, to do that by these articles, but, uh, you know, they're always interested in counterfeiting God's biblical prophecies to confuse and deceive. Those of us who who understand some of the Bible, who are perhaps Christians and read scripture and watch what they're doing, we know that Satan is always trying to counterfeit everything God does in the Bible. There's a Satan uh, counterfeit. Uh, so... I believe that they do have the intent to try to to try to take things uh, in the Bible and try to replicate them. Satan doesn't have that that desire to do that, and he's busy busy doing that, counterfeiting everything God does, and and um, so uh, and also there's just a lot of man-made weather events. Um, they admit they're doing geoengineering, uh, all kinds of unusual directed energy, uh, radar technology going on, 
all kinds of very, very strange fires, melting cars, uh, turning cars into ash with the, the trees still standing and um, all kinds of very, very strange weather activity that doesn't make any sense at all. So those are, those are my uh, main points. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, uh, tell me what, what you think. Uh, give me your take on it, because I know I don't have all the answers. Just trying to piece this puzzle together. You know, the most important thing is, is uh, just being right with God and, and uh, you know, uh, his son, Jesus Christ. And, and um, try not to be deceived in these end times. So thanks for tuning in. God bless you. And we'll be talking soon. Bye.